everybody. My name is Mike Montgomery. And this is my first flip. It's Mike's first flip. What's up, everybody? Today is a very exciting day because the income property renovation begins now. Yesterday, the dumpster showed up and this has a ton of room for us to throw away all of the old flooring, tile, backsplash, and any other old fixture we need to get rid of. If you haven't already seen the tour video of the inside, I'll leave a link to that down below, but let's go in. I invested 50-50 with my parents on this property and it cost a total of 150K. We're still not sure if we're gonna be selling it, renting it, or airbnb it when we're done, but the first step in any of those cases is demolition and getting this place to a clean slate. In just a second, we're gonna take off all the baseboard trim, and then I'm gonna find out what's underneath these laminate floors. We might be able to keep and salvage the old floors, and we might have to put down new ones. So let's find out. While I was taking all of this trim off, one thing that I found funny is just how many different types and styles of trim there were in the house. There was basic trim, molding trim, quarter round, all different shapes and colors, and they're all gonna go. A sharp utility knife is key whenever your trim has been painted in. You just wanna break that line between the trim and the wall so it doesn't peel the paint or the drywall paper away. Overall, the dumpster is 20 yards and it costs 500 bucks for about a week and it'll hold two tons. Anything beyond that will pay a little bit extra for 50 bucks a ton. And now it's time to find out what's underneath these original floors. I've got easy access here where the old wall was. So we're gonna try and pry this up. And underneath we have, drum roll please, wood floors. All right, so these are pretty stained up. We'll see how damaged they are and figure out whether or not they're worth replacing. I was super pumped with how quick and easy the floors came out. They were really heavy once you started piling them up though. Peeling away the old underlayment was very exciting because I could see finally what the original floors looked like, but they were rough. So yeah, the original floors aren't exactly beautiful, but we're gonna see what's underneath these laminates. When we bought the house, I was expecting to see more wood floors underneath these, but I was surprised at what I found. Okay, and underneath here. Oh! We have tile. I wasn't expecting that. So this was a big curveball because I wasn't expecting to find two different floorings. I thought there would be hardwoods throughout the whole house that I could sand and refinish, but now I'm forced to reconsider. I can either do two different types of flooring if the rest of the hardwood looks good, or I'll do new continuous flooring throughout on top of everything. It'll just depend on the quality of the flooring in the rest of the rooms. So let's find out. And these floors are super rough, so we're probably doing continuous floors, everything new. I enjoyed taking out the laminates in the hallways because it revealed some of the raw, unfinished, original hardwood floors. They've been sanded, but haven't been stained, sealed, or really ever used. It'd be pretty sweet if all the floors were in this good of condition. There were these dark floors in one of the two small bedrooms, so I took that out to see what the original floors looked like underneath, and boy was I disappointed. So here's a little fun fact. Whenever you see these stains in the hardwood floor, just know that's because there used to be carpet on top, and there was a dog that peed a lot. Oh boy, these woods are real rough. Oh. So yeah, due to a couple of these bedrooms being piddle central, we are gonna be doing new floors throughout the entire house. It wasn't the news that I was hoping for, but it was more like I was crossing my fingers rather than holding my breath. So we're just gonna move on and remove all of this peel and stick flooring that had been applied to this little bit of hallway in the small extra bathroom. This flooring was extra dirty and it was in the worst condition. It was pretty easy to peel up in a lot of places with a really sharp chisel, but basically impossible to get up otherwise. That's why I always buy a few packs of Harbor Freight chisels. They're a great deal. They come in basically every size and they come out to be like a buck a chisel. So when you use them for a task like this, it's no big deal and you don't have to feel bad about ruining it. Gross. So this is not the best news. I'm not sure what was happening down here, but we've got a leak in the subfloor. It's starting to bubble up a little bit. The rest of the floors are out though, and I'll get a plumber here soon. I do plan on replacing all of these doors. We'll get some new ones with fresh hardware. I forgot to take out the floors in here. For now, let's just do the door. Ah, oh, it's a flathead.
That's nice. It's painted in, so it didn't fall off. And just a reminder here, it is really good practice to use a utility knife and cut between the wall and your trim here. That way you don't peel away that paint. And I don't think that I'm gonna be putting a door back here. In fact, I'll probably tear out this whole portion of the wall. If you're curious, I've been using a small trim pulling pry bar and it's been working great. I'll make sure and leave links to all the tools, materials, and supplies that I've been using throughout the video, even though it's not much, in the description down below. Oh, and make sure and wear safety glasses. I normally wear normal glasses that protect my eyes and that's why I was forgetting them. Another one bites the dust. The doors also don't look terrible on camera, but they are very rough between about a thousand layers of paint and a lot of damage towards the bottom where the wood has been chipped. I figured I might as well throw those away. Every Habitat for Humanity store I've ever gone to has about a thousand doors. And I think that concludes day one. We got the floors out, baseboards, doors, and the trim around those doors. Demo will continue tomorrow. See you there. But first I wanna thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you need a website, an online store, or just a custom domain, Squarespace is your one-stop shop. And the best part is, is you need zero website building experience. I'm serious, if you can upload files and edit text blocks, you are well on your way to a one-of-a-kind site. Squarespace's designer templates look great on desktop, tablet, and mobile, no matter where customers find you, and they are packed with tons of great features, like no limits to the number of products that you can sell using a Squarespace store, Squarespace's Video Studio mobile app, which allows you to create high-level professional content for your website and social media, and do not forget member areas where you can package premium content behind a paywall, charging your members a monthly subscription fee. So to learn more, make sure and follow my link down in the description. That's squarespace.com slash modern builds, where you can build out your entire Squarespace site before entering any of your credit card info. And then when it's time to make your website live, don't forget to use my code modern builds for 10% off your first site store or domain through Squarespace. Thanks again to Squarespace. Now let's keep tearing this house apart. Day two is here, so is my dad. He's gonna give me a hand moving these appliances out. You ready? Ready. Let's do it. None of these appliances are in bad condition, but they don't look very great. They're definitely not gonna add any resale value or help if we end up airbnb this place. So we made sure to be really careful moving these out to the shop. That way we could get them to some friends or family who could use them. I was surprised how light this dishwasher was. Who knew? It's a pretty big appliance, but it doesn't weigh very much. And I'm super happy that it's spring. The weather is finally starting to change. About half of the days are nice. You know, you just need a light jacket. The other half of the days are cold or rainy, but still a lot better than this winter was. Moving the fridge was the toughest of the group, but this oversized dolly really helped a bunch. I'll try and find a link to one that's similar. The big wheels and just the big frame help a bunch. He's had it forever, but I'll see if I can find one. And these appliances are still good, so we're gonna find some friends or family that can use these rather than just selling them on Facebook Marketplace. Yes. Thanks for the help, Dad. Now the plan is to go room to room and finish out all the demo. I'll take out all of the trim, any fixtures that need to go. That way each room is closer to a clean slate and we fill that dumpster up. I started in the first corner bedroom. It is the one with the P floors. I removed all of the outlet and switch covers and then this floating shelf that I found a cool Lego man on top of. I took the screws out of the bracket and then moved over to the closet where there was trim that I needed to remove around the door frame and then a whole wall of pallet wood that was coming out. This stuff was only held on with a little bit of glue and some brad nails and those came out super easy. Reminder, wear safety glasses. Smooth, again. The pallet headboard was next to go. It was just on the wall with a cleat and it actually didn't take up too much space in the dumpster once I backfilled everything underneath it. Bedroom two. This is the second of the two smaller bedrooms, AKA the dark room. I think it's gonna feel a lot larger and more comfortable once I get some white or off white walls in here. Time for bedroom three. 
bedroom three is the master. It's got the extra big window and we're gonna end up creating a huge master closet. So I'm getting everything out of the way that's there currently. I wanna expand the closet that's currently there to the right where there's another closet that goes into the living room. I don't really need that living room closet. We're gonna create storage on the wall. So we're gonna incorporate that into the master. That's master bedroom complete. Now it's time to move on to the bathroom. We're gonna get rid of this paneling. Before the beadboard could come off, I needed to get rid of any of the fixtures and the trim on top and on bottom. I was hoping that this beadboard would come off the wall relatively easy and not cause too much damage so that I wouldn't have to replace the drywall underneath it. It was shot on with quite a few brad nails, but it did have a lot of adhesive on the back, and some of that adhesive took a little bit of the drywall paper with it. Now, ultimately, it's not enough damage that I'm gonna need to replace the drywall, and that's awesome. As you guys know, I am the king of skim coats, so fixing that is gonna be no problem. I'll be able to do it in an afternoon. I do not plan on removing this vanity though. It's relatively new and in really nice condition. Plus the countertops on top are perfect for me to do epoxy marble on top of, which I'm very excited for. So I removed all of the tile and all of the beadboard around it carefully. That way I didn't damage it. The toilet was in the way a little bit, but I didn't want to take it out quite yet because I was still using it to pee in every once in a while. The dumpster's starting to fill up a little bit. And I'll be building new linen closets from scratch, so I'm gonna get this one out and the one at the end of the hallway. If you remember from the tour video, these drawers stick a little bit in places. It's just because of the buildup of multiple layers of paint over time. It's definitely vintage, but it doesn't have that charm that I'm looking for to keep. Oh, and this is another pro tip to wear safety glasses. The paneling in the hallway came out pretty much the same way that it did in the bathroom because it was applied the same way. The beadboard did damage a little bit of the drywall and texture on the walls, but I'm gonna be able to fix this faster than I could hang new stuff for sure. So this is gonna be fun to take care of, but glad the paneling's down. I'll do one quick skim coat to smooth everything out, then I can spray texture to match the rest of the house. The second linen closet is right off of the hallway, kind of by the dining room. I guess it's not technically a linen closet considering it's not that close to a bathroom. You could put linens in it, but really almost anything could go in there. And all these drawers were pretty fun to break down before I threw them in the dumpster. Just a couple of minutes saved a ton of room in that dumpster. You can see here where it says, do not fill above this line, meaning you can't put trash above the edge of the dumpster. Weight doesn't matter at all. I wanna put as much trash in there as possible. So being smart with my space is critical. Oh, and look right there where the paint peeled away with the trim. And that's why you wanna use a utility knife to prevent that. Up until this point, the dining room hasn't seen too much action. There hasn't been a ton to remove other than a little bit of trim around the wall. And then once that was gone, I took care of the ceiling fan that was up there. Now this is getting donated, so don't worry. It's not getting thrown in the dumpster. All of the light fixtures that are good are getting reused somewhere else. None of the fans match, kind of like all of the trim. So getting matching ones, I think will really help tie everything together after paint and stuff is installed. Overall though, this has been a really fun process and I'm trying my best to kind of vlog and document this process because I'm not an expert, so I can't exactly teach you everything if I'm learning it as well. Okay, day two complete. Operation Fill the Dumpster is going really well and we'll pick up on day three. See you tomorrow. Day three, goodbye time. I'm sure the safety police are happy that I'm finally wearing glasses. My bad earlier, but this part of demo was way too destructive for me to forget them. 
I'm pretty sure that this was the toughest thing to remove up until this point. I had to break out the sledge and then the big crowbar to finally get it removed. It was just sunk in there with a ton of nails and adhesive. Woo! That was tougher than I thought it would be. I did a little bit of damage while removing the backsplash tiles. The small ones were really stuck on there. That adhesive was really good. I'll be able to repair everything that I did mess up. And I actually haven't taken backsplash down a ton. If anybody has helpful tips for this, leave them down in the comments if you don't mind. Along this wall, I did quite a bit more damage just because the tiles were stuck on there and I had to break away a little bit of the drywall to get some of the tiles loose. And I'll put some new drywall on this wall before backsplash. All right, so that drywall is gonna need repairing, but at least we got the backsplash down. Operation Dumpster was going great. I mean, we're on day three, but it wasn't filling up in terms of space. But adding all this tile and the countertops in a second adds a ton of weight. This sink is going in the donations pile. It's totally fine. And after that, I crawled into the base cabinets and unscrewed the countertops from them before prying them apart. It just had some finish nails holding it down, so it doesn't look like I'm hurting the cabinets. There we go. All right, that went great. I'm gonna get a hand moving that later, though. With all of the grout lines, I've never been a fan of small tile countertops. I'll replace them either by pouring epoxy over MDF or getting solid surface stone. Okay, so for now, that's a wrap on kitchen, and we'll move on to the spare bathroom. This used to have some interesting wallpaper. And this house is old, it's got so many flathead screws. Oh man, another wallpaper. This bathroom is in pretty gross condition and the camera really doesn't do it justice. Even though this looks like a nice porcelain sink, it's just enamel over metal. In my opinion, it's not worth keeping and you'll definitely not want it after a few seconds. All right, I'm just breaking it, I can't get it. Ah, it's not porcelain, it's metal. I don't think it's gonna break the way I want. I was eventually able to wrestle this thing out. I'm gonna be building a custom vanity that looks really nice in this space. That way there's a cabinet and a countertop and that'll be way more useful. Okay. Today is going great so far. I'm gonna go ahead and give my dad a call, see if he can get me a hand with those countertops. Hey, can you give me a hand moving the countertops from the kitchen into the dumpster? I got them out in like one piece, but they're pretty heavy. Okay, 15 minutes. So while he's on his way, I'm gonna get the trim out in that little bit of hallway between the bathroom, the garage entry, and the kitchen. And that'll be all the trim. Another wallpaper, wow. The doorway into the garage is pretty fresh. It's original and I might strip the old paint off. That way I could sand and finish it. We'll see. You bring the muscles? Brought it. All right, let's move these counters. People might be wondering why I didn't break these up and just move it all myself. And my thought is if I laid these flat on the floor of the dumpster, they would take up virtually no space and be a lot of weight. Woo. All right, we still got one more. As you can tell, I'm taking Operation Fill the Dumpster very seriously. I wanna see how much I can fit. Bah! Super pro. You know, this dumpster really isn't filling up that fast. Uh, yeah, could've used a smaller dumpster. But you got a 20 yard dumpster for the price of 10. That is true, we got a discount. Yeah, I think that actually might be a wrap for today. I'll be coming back tomorrow to take care of removing any of the framing, any of the old walls that I've gotta take out or just expand. So anyways, this is day three, Operation Fill the Dumpster. It's kinda going. Not as fast as I thought it would, but see you tomorrow. Welcome back everybody. It's day four and we are taking out all of the framing that needs to go today. Eventually this big wall is going to be the TV wall and the access to this closet is going away. And what I'm gonna be doing is breaking through to this into the master bedroom. This room isn't huge, but I can make it feel extra premium by making a giant master closet. We'll basically tear out this part of the wall up here and build a whole custom case. Let's grab the safety glasses. And this meant that I could take out that closet door casing since the closet door is no longer gonna be there. Okay, and this next part is not advised. I really thought that would go smoother. Oh, I'm 
glad I didn't get hurt though. I'm still calling it Super Pro, and now it's time to remove the rest of the drywall so I could see what's happening behind there and see the framing of this whole closet and wall. As a rule of thumb, most load-bearing walls go perpendicular to your ceiling joists, and this is going parallel, so the likelihood of this being load-bearing is low, and that is awesome news. It doesn't sound like there's anything in here, and it's taking up a lot of headroom, so we're gonna remove this and the wall that's blocking all that light from the window. Huh. I think this is wood. I have no idea why these soffits are so common in older bathrooms. I've lived in a couple of older houses with these. They just take up a bunch of space. I don't know if they were meant to originally feel cozy, but it's not working. Room's already getting bigger. I wanna make this doorway higher. We're gonna expose the framing and see what we can cut away. And this wall is going parallel with our ceiling joists too. More good news. It's funny, I keep taking things out in chunks, in pieces, but this is just what comes with doing something for the first time. I'm not always sure how much to demo before moving on. And this is where I'll probably say, I appreciate all the encouraging comments that people have had towards this project. Taking on my first income property is a little bit daunting. And this winter, while I was looking at it while working on the Airbnb, I was almost dreading it because there is so much that I don't know how to do yet but I'm gonna learn along the way. I learned a ton renovating the Joshua Tree House, so I think I can handle it, but I appreciate all the support. The last wall that I need to look at before I can remove framing is this bathroom wall. It basically divides this already small room and takes away all of the natural light from the vanity area where you need it most. And I didn't need to do any inspecting to know that there's no way this is load bearing. It's basically just a little partition. I was able to cut away the nails holding the top plates onto the studs with my Sawzall and then take everything out with a pry bar. And the list of drywall repairs keeps getting bigger. <laughs> And I guess that's one upside to a wood traditional foundation over concrete is all of this framing pried away from the floor easily. Another way of knowing if a wall is load bearing on a smaller house is if there's joists overlapping or sistering over that wall. And that's not happening here. This is way too far towards the edge of the house. There's so much more room. The light can now come in from that window through the wall and fill up the space. At this point in time, I figured I might as well just take out the entire linen closet build out there's a lot of layers of paint on there and I'll be able to add something, maybe even with natural wood tone, that'll look really good. Since a lot of the walls and cabinets and things will be lighter colored. This was basically the last thing I could think of doing before it was time to start removing framing. And before I could remove the framing, I had to climb up in the attic. So I just wanted to take care of this first. Demo is fun. Linen closet number two complete. I decided just to tear it all out. I'm building it from scratch. I think it might actually be easier and I can have some real wood showing instead of everything painted. Whoa, that is all of the demolition. But before I can take out any framing, I need to double check what is and what isn't load bearing in the attic. The framing in the bathroom was, was flimsy and obvious that it wasn't load bearing, but I'm not quite sure if the closet framing is load bearing and I don't want to remove the drywall in the ceiling so we'll just pop up there. Oh, it's dark as heck up here. It's a little bit of a mess up here. I haven't been in the attic yet. Wow, shout out to everybody that works in attics. And now we're at the spot where both the hallway door and that other closet wall we wanna remove connects in the attic. And there's some interesting framing. So first off, you'll notice we've got these rafters every 16 or 18 inches and they're spliced right down the center of the house. But on that same spacing, over the wall we wanna remove, we've just got a single two by six laid flat. Now that tells me there is no way this board is holding weight because you don't put framing that way if it is. The second thing confirming that I can remove those walls is the bracing on the roof. You can see it here and here tied to that center wall and these sets of rafters. When framing, they avoided this wall on purpose because it doesn't hold weight the same as the other wall that runs perpendicular to the rafters. So I think we're all good. Comment down below if I'm being dumb and I will fix it, but I think I'm on the right path. All right, let's get out of here. Hey, Dad, hey. good luck. That boys don't belong in attics. This is the worst Ninja Warrior course I could ever imagine. All right, that honestly is such great news because now we can just keep demoing and fill this dumpster up. 
I thought I would be able to knock out these studs without cutting away the nails, holding them to the top plates, and I probably should have cut them away first. You wanna try it? Whoa! Super pro. Look at that. What a professional. Now, I don't want to take any credit away from my dad. He's a freaking Hulk, but... Woo! Catch. The reason that he was successful is because he was hitting the bottom or the tops of the stud, and that is key. And this next section of the wall came off in one big piece. It was really fun. Whoa. I didn't think it was about to fall. I was just about to grab the sledgehammer. Next, I took out this jack stud for that old header since we're not gonna need it. This way we can have a clean 90 degree corner. And now it is time to take care of the double top plate on the ceiling. Now I separated it from the rest of the wall with my Sawzall and then I pried away the first of the two two by fours. It was on there really snug, but it separated without any problems. The second 2x4 is the one that the 2x6 is attached to that we saw in the attic. Now I realized that the drywall is connected to that 2x6 which is attached to these top plates. So I think I was kind of wrong. I probably could have taken all of that stuff out but I should have kept the, uh, the double plate up there. I was probably right in assuming that this wasn't load bearing down here but the double plate was kind of acting as a header. And so now I've got to figure that out. We'll check back though. Ultimately, I'll have a friend come by that knows a lot more than I do and double check that I wasn't wrong. Make sure and stay tuned for episode two so you can see what ends up happening. Click subscribe and the notification bell, all that stuff. That's way better. Opening up these doorways makes a huge difference. And I know that I'm removing this two by six, but don't be scared. That doesn't mean that it's holding any weight. That's just the opening for the framing of the door. It's all standard stuff and it's not a problem that it's going. Awesome, that's way better. We've effectively made a huge mess. Mom, what's up? Welcome, dad's Hi. been here. And now it's time to clean up all this. You ready? Ready. Yay. So this entire day, I didn't throw anything in the dumpster because I knew my parents were coming by after they got off work. I knew they'd give me a lot of help and it would be a lot easier cleaning with a group of people instead of just by myself. Each room had a pile of wood, drywall, and then a bunch of small stuff that I threw into a bucket and then dumped into the dumpster. I wanna give both my mom and dad a big shout out. Obviously we're investing together on this property, I fronted the money for the down payment, we used their credit to get a good loan, and then I'm fronting the majority of the renovation costs and obviously work. I think it's a pretty good split that's 50-50. If we sell, we'll just split the cash halfway. If we rent it, they'll manage the property, and if we Airbnb it, they'll do a lot more managing, which will be definitely worth it in my favor. Basically, we're just trying to play to everybody's strengths and make some money along the way. And that's it. Operation fill the dumpster is going great. Today we made a ton of progress. Thank you, mom and dad. And tomorrow is our last day we have it, so we've gotta get this thing filled to the top. See you tomorrow. What's up everybody, it's day five, and today we are taking out this wall right here. It's got power ran down there, so we wanna be careful. I'll take off all the drywall first. And that's basically all I can know until I open up the wall and see what's back there. I'm not sure how it's wired. I don't know anything yet. As I uncovered everything, I saw that the power came in from the wall to a plug, then a switch, then back up the wall. I made sure to take pictures with my phone of all of the wiring on each of the plugs just to keep note of things for my own reference. Then I turned off the breaker and double checked it. And then we'll just double check, make sure that we're being safe. All good, no power. I just disconnected the plug and the light switch that was in there and then snaked the old wires back through the studs so that I had as much of a lead as possible. I put cap nuts and electrical tape on the ends of all of this. That way no one would get shocked even if that breaker switches back on. And then it was time to break out the Sawzall again to remove this little half wall. Once again, demo is fun. So 
So it basically took one guy five days to completely destroy every finish in a house. I wonder how long it's gonna take to build everything else back up. I went through sweeping each room, kind of taking inventory of what I've done, and I'm really happy with the progress that we've made so far. The dumpster isn't completely full, but we've gotten everything out of this house that I can think of, and I think we're over the weight limit already. So that is Operation Dumpster complete. There's nothing else to destroy in the house, but luckily there is an old barn in the back that we need to clear out. So I'm gonna close this up and we'll use any extra space and tonnage available to get rid of all of that mess and save a trip to the dump. But it is pretty good size. I mean, you can fit a tractor in here. So I wanna see how it looks once it's all cleaned up. And we've got that space in the dumpster, so might as well. Now I realize this is far from fancy, but there's a nice spot for chickens right here. A couple stalls on the inside and outside on the other side. I mean, they're rough, but they could be usable. Look who it is, Tractor Mom. So like I mentioned, this process was simple. Just fill up the bucket of the tractor with trash. Then my mom went and dumped that into the dumpster and we just kept that flow going. There was a lot of trash in here though. We filled up the dumpster before we could empty out the barn, but still good progress. Operation fill the dumpster complete. Next time I see you, we'll be reframing and fixing the framing errors that I made. Until next time, bye everybody. This has been Mike's first flip. <laughs> Come on, mom, you can make it. That's because I want to do it. Come on, mom, do it. Oh my God. The video is only so long. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you everybody. Uh, we'll be out tomorrow. We'll be framing. And the dumpster gets picked up, so that's fun.